don't I know you, sir? Don't believe so. I haven't been here in many years. Name's Silas Greaves. Silas Greaves? The bounty hunter? Used to be. Ah, well, what are you doing here in Abilene? Just passing through. Got a little business to take care of. Well, sir, it would be an honor if you would allow me to buy you a beer. Hell, son, it would be my honor to drink it. I'm Molly. Howdy. I'm Dwight. That's Jack and Steve. Ben's behind the bar. Oh, I bet you got some great stories. A couple. <laughs> Any of them true? Jack, be nice. A few. What about your shootout with Henry Plummer's gang in Bannock, Montana? Is that where you started as a bounty hunter? That's what it says in this here dime novel. Don't believe everything you read in them dime novels, boy. First man I hunted was back when I was riding with Billy the Kid. You knew Billy the Kid? Damn right. That scrawny son of a bitch had no fear. Wouldn't back down for nobody. I heard he collected the tin stars off any crooked lawmen who crossed it. It was a war, boy. The Lincoln County War. And Billy promised his regulators would take the life of every bastard who helped bushwhack John Tunstall. Kid had a big chip on his shoulder and a hair-trigger temper. Made him dangerous as hell. It was about 30 years ago. Billy was hiding out in an abandoned farm near Stinkin' Springs. I threw in with the kid because the man I had sworn vengeance on was riding with Billy's enemies. But before I tell you why I want that some bitch dead, let me tell you what happened that day. I was heading back to the hideout when suddenly I had this funny feeling. Funny, haha? -ha. No, Steve. The other kind of funny. You heard Tack. We need to stay here and keep an eye on the road. That's not fair. We're missing all the fun. I knew those two morons would never let me through. I had no choice. Who's that? Is he with us? Was it Pat Garrett's posse? Oh yeah. I heard the shots and I knew I had to move fast. Garrett and his army of deputies had surrounded the entire homestead. I decided to help Billy and the boys out a bit. So that's just what I did. Hey, have one behind us! Stay on it! Cover fire! As the governor of New Mexico was paying for the kids' apprehension, Garrett was able to hire every gun hand in Lincoln County. You can't hide forever! I knew that going through that front door meant putting my butt in a shooting gallery, so I decided to get sneaky. You're dead! 
Watch out! He's one of them! God damn it, he's right behind us! Where the hell? When you need him, come down. Get these some bitches running. Garrett's men were running around like a bunch of chickens with their heads cut off. Still, one of them reached the water tower. Not a bad idea. It would be a turkey shoot from up there. Luckily, these shooters Garrett hired weren't the sharpest tools in the shed. A lot of them were saddle tramps or sod busters or drunken drifters looking to make a few bucks. I heard a friendly voice yelling at me from the window. Back door! We'll cover you! Try aiming, you idiots! Truth be told, things weren't much better behind the house. their numbers in half. Uh, but that just made the ones that were left twice as mad. Would somebody kill him? with a seemingly endless supply of ammo. It was a bit of a slog, but I finally fought my way around the back of the house. And like that, you I was inside, dead, none the worse for wear. I passed Dirty Dave, and upstairs I found Billy and Charlie Bolton.
Billy looked at me and said, About time, amigo! Grab a gun and get to the window! Wait, so you were friends with Billy the Kid? Yeah, sort of. Anyway, we were surrounded by dozens of deputized shooters who wanted to do us harm. Garrett's men were dropping like flies, but they just kept on coming. I think I got one! Where'd he come from? Where the hell when Charlie got hit. They're catching us in a crossfire, shouted Billy. Get to the other side! Pretty clear, even to Billy. But maybe discretion was the better part of valor. What does that mean? It means that it was time to cut and run. They got a gatlin, Billy shouted. Get the horses and bring them round back. I'll draw their attention. said that it was time to cut and run.
directed that order at me. And I thought, why the hell do I have to do? But I went anyway. Dumbass that I was back then. fled in my place. But I had that false sense of invincibility that many young men have. Like Jack. What are you saying, old man? Jack is just joshing with you now. Yeah, he better be. Mr. Graves, please continue. Please, call me Silas, ma'am. Now, uh, where was I? What are you going to do? You come out and I will. Shoot, I dare you. You can't get me. You are heading for the barn. Gonna cut you, boy! like Garrett fired a whole regiment of fire guns. And just when I thought I was done with them, more of these hapless bastards would pop up. You think you can kill me too? Finally, I had the stables within my reach. when I met Sheriff Pat Garrett. I read that you went toe-to-toe -to -toe with him, sir. That backstabbing bastard with that tacked-on tin star. You challenged him to a showdown. You read that in a dime novel? It said he showed no fear as he took your measure with eyes like a rattlesnake. in a fair fight. <laughs> Is that what that Penny Dreadful said? No, boy. That ain't what I meant when I said I met Pat Garrett. So let me start again. I finally reached those damn stables. <laughs> 